Imagine your life as um, a movie and this moment is the present scene of the movie. So if in this present scene uh, there's some sadness or some fear or some doubt or even you know take it to an extreme you know even if in this moment there's a sense of real uh, despair or even real hopelessness or even real you know powerlessness um, from the perspective of the movie perhaps nothing's gone wrong it's like when you go and watch a movie in a in a movie theater in a cinema and then there's a scene where the main character is experiencing great loss or great fear or just, again, a sense of great helplessness or a sense that their life has gone completely wrong. Even if the main, char even if the main character has a sense that their life has gone completely wrong, when you're watching this movie, you don't have any sense that the movie has gone wrong. You know, you don't have any sense that the movie itself is broken or the movie has gone off script. You know, you don't you don't run out of the movie theater and run and try and find the, the, the manager of the movie theater and, and tell him, quick, you know, come, there's something something's gone wrong with the movie. You, you, you don't. You see that that scene is a perfect scene, even if the scene is full of imperfection, even if in the scene the main character feels that everything is imperfect or that their life has gone wrong. You, you understand that that scene is in itself a perfect scene. The movie hasn't gone wrong. That, that scene could be the most important scene in the movie. No, no scene can damage the movie. You, know, you, you, may, you may feel it's a good scene or a bad scene. It's a wonderful scene or a terrible scene. But the movie itself hasn't gone wrong. And maybe this is a wonderful metaphor for our own lives. Actually, maybe our, our lives can't go wrong. That's often the, the sense behind or at the heart of so much of our suffering. You know, it's the sense that life has gone wrong. This movie has gone wrong. The movie has gone off script. You know, I've stumbled off of the path. I was on the path. And now this has happened, this this crisis, this this problem, this this circumstance. And now that in my present experience, there's, there's great pain or there's great doubt or there's great fear. It feels like it can feel like you know, I've stumbled off the path or, or the movie has gone wrong. Uh, what if that is the path? What if, you know, even feeling as though you've stumbled off the path and experiencing the doubt and the confusion and the lack of answers? What if that, that scene is not wrong? What if that scene is somehow part of the perfection of the movie, part of the vastness of the movie that the mind can never hope to to comprehend. You know, and the the thing is, we don't know what the next scene will be. We don't know what the next scene in the movie of our lives will be. Uh, the mind wants to know, and it tries to know, and it tries to work it out, and that can become so exhausting trying to predict and trying to plan the next scene in the movie, and the scene after that, and the scene after that, and the scene after that, and often. You know, we're trying to escape the present scene, to escape this moment, to escape what's appearing right now. We're trying to get out of the present scene and get to the next scene where things will be better or we'll even get to the perfect scene in the future. You know, the perfect scene of perfect success or perfect fame or even perfect enlightenment or some perf just some perfect feeling or some perfect this or some perfect that. Or we're trying to rewind so we're either trying to fast forward to the next scene, the better scene, or we're trying to rewind. I want to get back to the previous scene. So we spend so much of our lives with our fingers on the fast forward button or on the rewind button, or, or at least trying to press fast forward, trying to press rewind, realizing actually that we can't escape the present scene. Why? Because there is only the present scene. There is only this moment, even you know, our memory of a previous scene appears in this scene. Our, mem our idea, our dream, our hope, our projection of a future scene appears in this scene. So past and future are part of this present scene. There is only this present scene. And in this present scene, there might be a longing to return to a previous scene or a longing to reach the next scene or a better scene or the perfect scene or the ultimate scene. But still, all of that, all of that, 
without exception, is held within the present scene. All of that is the present scene. There's only the present scene. The present scene holds everything without judgment, without rejection, without resistance. It's it's a giant yes. The present scene is, is a giant yes. And so, so often we're trying to get to the next scene or get back to an old scene, get back to the previous scene. We're trying to press rewind or fast forward. What that actually becomes, nothing wrong with it, of course, but it, what it becomes is a rejection of this present scene. You know, I, I, I envision a wonderful, beautiful, blissful scene tomorrow. And that's, it's a, that's a beautiful intention. It's a beautiful dream. But so easily we move into resistance of this scene. I want to get to that scene. I want to get to that scene now. So what that means is I don't want to be in this scene. But you see, this scene, this present scene, is your home. This is home. So as long as you're trying to escape this scene, trying to get rid of this scene, trying to, or just trying to deny this scene or push away this scene, in a way you're pushing away home. You're pushing away what you truly long for. You're pushing away all the intelligence of life itself. All the intelligence of life itself is contained within this present scene. Even if in this present scene that there's doubt or there's fear or there's a longing, perhaps these are not mistakes. Perhaps there are no mistakes in the present scene. Even if it feels like there's a mistake, perhaps even a sense that there's a mistake is also a, a sacred part of this present scene. It's held in this present scene. It's allowed in this present scene. So really remembering who you are, remembering your true home, remembering that this present scene is all there is and it holds everything, past, future, thought, sensation, feeling, even pain, even despair. That's how huge it is. Remembering who you truly are, that is total alignment with life. That's total alignment with life. Saying yes to this present scene is saying yes to the entire movie of your life. Because in this moment, this present scene is the movie of your life. This, in reality, this present scene isn't a tiny, 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 tiny sliver. It's not a single frame of celluloid of the movie of your life. In this moment, and we're only ever talking about this moment, in this moment, this present scene is the movie of your life. So saying yes to this scene, or more truthfully, being what you are, which is the yes to this scene, in the same way that the movie screen, the movie screen holds any scene. It holds the difficult scenes, it holds the scenes of fear and, and scenes of joy and scenes of bliss and scenes of war and scenes of romance and scenes of tears and laughter. The, the, the movie screen holds all movies unconditionally. It doesn't reject any movie. It doesn't try and push away certain kinds of movies. It, it doesn't try and numb itself or try and detach itself or try and escape or it doesn't try and hold on to movies and make certain movies stay. It's just radical openness. It's, it's radical openness to whatever movie appears. It's, it's, it's just radical. In that sense, it's radically open to what is. And in a deeper sense, it, it, it's not separate from the movie. The movie screen can't be separated from the movie in the same way that, you know, when you go and watch a movie in a movie theatre and, and you become so absorbed in the movie, in the content of the movie, you're, you're never aware that you're watching a screen, although technically that's all that's happening is you're sitting in a room staring at <laughs> staring at a screen. And yet, you know, two hours later, you walk out of the movie theatre and you feel that you've been on a journey in time and space and you've laughed and you've cried and you've been through, you've been moved, you've been even changed and transformed and yet the whole time all that was happening was that you were sitting in a room staring at a, a flat screen which is incredible. So the, the screen, the movie screen, 
is a wonderful metaphor. In a way, we can only use metaphors here. It's a wonderful metaphor for who you truly are, which is this radical openness to the present scene, uh, in ultimately inseparable, inseparable from the present scene. So, in a sense, you don't do the yes. You know yourself as the yes. The movie screen is the cosmic yes with no opposite. Because rem remember, the screen can't say no. In a sense, it doesn't even have the choice to say yes. It, it is an unconditional yes. That's how it's built. That's not what it has to try to do. That is how it's built. It's built as the yes. Um, as you are. As you are, that is your nature.